Tinkerer Tales. We are about to enter chapter 18. Come on, James. Where's the love? When are we falling in love? Eok lives to see another day. Kane had, had to intervene and shock James just to get him down to stop chasing. There were a few other shocking moments for James when we had to explain what, that Lena was with the resistance, which he refused to believe for a while. He's not allowed to hurt Eok from now on, and he has to listen to the commands of the members of the DAET. After showing James and Eok the layout of the cabin as well as their rooms, I end up talking to Ryan Kane over Kane for a few hours, simply catching up and letting them know my experience on Yule. Kane is convinced James is going to backstab us, and Ryan doesn't put much faith than him either. At least they seem to be relatively okay with Eok, whom I explained helped me escape. The first night I was hoping it would go without any issues, until I hear something chatter in the kitchen. I sneak into the kitchen to turn on the lights. Um, are you clothed down there? Oh, thank god. <laughs> Immediately a naked James whirls around to greet me, start out the intrusion. Oh. What are you doing in the middle of the night? You give him a once over, noticing he's at least wearing briefs that cover his genitals. I've seen this man naked too many times in a lifetime. Where are your clothes in advance now? At least he's wearing the bracelets, though, is he? Where, what does the bracelet look like? Okay, it's right there. He hasn't attempted to remove it. I heard something shatter, I say, as well. James' line, James line of sight reveals what, he, what I heard moments before, a broken cup <laughs> on the floor. Perhaps if this room was sufficiently lighted, I wouldn't be knocking things over. I sigh while bending down to pick up the broken shards of glass. There's a light switch near every door if you need light, I explain, pointing at the switch behind me. I throw the shards into the bin and face James again. I'm surprised you didn't know with you running a spaceship and all. <laughs> He helps acting all prickly as he turns away from me. Lights are activated at my command, a command deck. Your technology is different from mine. I suppose it is. Wait, that doesn't explain why he's here, half naked in the middle of the room of the night. Why are you not wearing clothes? I didn't think I would run into anyone to have to dress myself this decently, he explains. Also, the garments here you've given me are garbage in are are garbage and in tatters. Why should I wear them? He questions grumpily. There's something inherently funny, funny about how half-naked James complained about clothes in my kitchen. Well, I didn't have anything your size, are you, Weekly? Is this what you do to your prisoners? Deprive them of decent garb? <sighs> no, we prefer to lash them until they pass out. <laughs> You're gonna close first thing in the morning. I say hoping to appease him. I don't want you walking around like this any more than you do. He ends up smirking. Is that so? And here I thought you were enjoying yourself seeing me in these conditions. I don't enjoy seeing you naked. I reply immediately, feeling myself start to blush at an in insinuation. I wasn't speaking about that, he responds in a crass voice. He seemed to enjoy being on the other side. Other side? He takes a step closer, appearing tall and threatening. However, I hold my ground. I know he can't do anything to me. Let's not forget that it was you who seemed very adamant I stay here and help your side, he says in a low voice. You could have left me there, but you did not. It's not wrong. I didn't negotiate to release him, or at least use him as an asset. That, and I also didn't want him want to have him locked up. You are an en enigma to me. You're, you challenged me every step of the way. Disrespectful towards superiors, disobeyed orders, snuck out of the palace, and you have certainly not held back your contempt for me. He goes off at me. He circles around the kitchen island, his eyes trained on my left arm, the one with the uh. scar. You have made an attempt of my life, yet strangely enough, try to protect me as well. Uh. You even saved my life when the ship exploded. You could have easily only saved yourself, he says in a softer voice. Do I confuse you? I cut in. I admit my actions do seem contrary when he lists them all like mm. this. Very much so, he admits as he leans over the kitchen island, arms on the counter. I'm not quite sure how to respond uh. to that. Why? He asks, the question echoing my mind. Why what? Uh. Were I in your position, I would have left you to die in space. Be done with the hassle. I'm chuckling out loud. I doubt that, I say. This makes James raise his eyebrows in response. Huh. You sound very sure of yourself. I guess I am a little pretentious, thinking I know him better than he knows himself. However, everything I've seen of this man up until now, I doubt he would have left me left let me die in that scenario where the roles reversed. I've seen him kill in front of my very eyes, but I've also seen him sacrifice himself for others. He's complicated, demonstrating the capacity for murder, but also showcasing the opposite. Even now he's doing this all because he wants to save Lena, his sister. There have been plenty of moments you could have killed me, I point out. You're supposed to be princess, royalty, James growls. Why would I kill you and squander my chances? I think you're lying, I say. It's not because I think he has some goodness in his heart. No, I think there was something else. For a long time, I thought you took me because I pretended to be princess, I say, looking down at the counter. But I forgot you didn't even know about that when you initially took me. Then Billy's told me that you'd only take prisoners who demonstrated medical abilities. 
James kept, keeps quiet, staring me down. Once I knew of Prince Norna's condition, I thought it was because Lord Verrett has commanded you to take back anyone who could possibly heal him. And it does make sense. I think that's a huge reason why Veritas does anything he's doing. He wants to keep Nornis safe. He wants to find someone who can cure Nornis. But James doesn't care about Nornis. He cares about his own siblings. But you didn't take me because you desperately want to find a healer for the young prince, I draw out. I bet my lashes at him. You were looking for someone to cure your sister, weren't you? She said she lost her ability to phase, to fly. Both brothers are immensely protective of her because of this. I can't see James risking his life for, to find someone to heal Nornis, but I can definitely see him doing this for his sister. The small nibble on his bottom lip and a flash of irritation in his eyes confirm my suspicions. Mm -hmm. Don't speak as if you know everything, James grinned slowly. You're right, I don't know everything. Let's be kind. <sighs> Shut your mouth hole, simple as that, he responds. I'm simply making a deduction of what I've witnessed so far, and I don't think I'm wrong when I say. I look him in the eye, searching for something that he might be hiding. You'd do anything to save her, right? Huh. James huffs in response, but doesn't reply. I assume that's a yes. I give him a comforting smile. I promise we'll save her. She doesn't have to die. If we work together, I'm sure it'll be alright. <laughs> he clicks his tongue at me. You're a bothersome creature. I roll my eyes at his choice of words. When will I stop being earthling or creature? How will we start over, I propose. Huh? Start over, he repeats. I know you don't really want to kill me, and I want to make sure my planet isn't blown up. So how about we just move past the ugly things you've done to you've done to me and focus on our new objective of defeating Lord Veritas? He stares at me in disbelief. Honestly, I'm a little surprised at myself as well. I'm ready to move on, move past it. The abduction, the imprisonment. I lost my freedom due to this guy. The past month spent in a dungeon wasn't fun for me either. My phone is blown up. Let me. <laughs> Now our dynamics are reversed, but I don't really want to be the one to take away his freedom. I don't want a repeat of what happened to me. I just want us to work together. James sighed this time around. You forgive me of my sins, is that what you're saying? I guess in a sense, but you don't have to apologize though. He chuckles incredulously. Again, you are an enigma. Are all earthlings are as perplexing as you? I just try to be kind and forgiving. Well, you're out of luck. I won't apologize for my actions, he says gruffly. Okay, that sings a little, I have to admit. I had hoped he'd be ready to play along and apologize. No, I kind of figured he wouldn't. Ugh. I will bear my sins until the day I die. An apology won't undo the things I've done. Words are meaningless. I get the sense he's not just talking about kidnapping me. But well, words matter to me, and I think we're going to start over. Ugh. You decided that on your own, he cuts in. Then you're going to have to learn to say you're sorry for the bad things you've done, I finish. Oh, and use my name, I add, quickly add. Ugh. That's never going to happen, so forget about it, he replies and then turns on his heel. I can't hide the disappointment on my face. I suddenly feel embarrassed for thinking I could actually convince him. Mm. You better start thinking of ways to save your planet instead of trying to make me apologize, he says as he walks away. Well, where are you going? I call out to him. Mm. To find this putrid bathroom you mentioned earlier, I need to relieve myself. I sigh and close my eyes. Wrong way, it's down the hall over there, I say, and point in the opposite direction Jane was going in. He avoids my eyes as he walks past me, pretending he was going the right way all this time. I guess we still have a long way to go, but first things first, I have got to get him something to wear, because I don't think I can handle seeing him strut around half naked like this all the time. In the morning, I'm started awake by the sound of someone smashing a hammer against the wall. What is that? I yell out, walking into the kitchen. Oh, oh morning! <laughs> Ryan greets me as he pauses from his work. What in the world are you doing? I question him, seeing the hammer clutch in his yeah. hands. Well, see this door here? Or points to the door next to the kitchen. Huh? I say slightly confused. We had a door there? Mm. It leads to the basement, I think. It's stuck. And you think taking a hammer to the door will magically open it up? I say in a de deadpan voice. Mm. No, but yes. Rice swings the hammer against the door's lock. I sigh. My brother is brilliant, but sometimes he misses a lot of common sense. Can you quit the hammering here? Let me see why it's stuck, I say. And push him out of the way. I press my hands against the door and try to move it. As Rai said, it's stuck. It won't budge. Uh. I already unlocked it, says Rai, showing the key in his hand. Well, if it isn't locked, perhaps a deadbolt is stuck. I crouch down onto my knees and look through the keyhole. Obviously, it's too dark to make out anything. Kane wouldn't be better at this than me, but I'll give it a shot. I drew a thin thread from my index finger and guide it inside the hole. I try to feel my way around, poking and wiggling as much as I can, except nothing is moving, which is starting to frustrate me. Hmm. Hello, good morning, Yoga greets us as he enters the kitchen. I stand up straight and dissolve my thread. It's not budging, I say dejectedly. And hello to you too, Yoga. Mm. Just leave it to me, I'll get it open before you're back, Rai says enthusiastically. 
I leave him with the I leave him to tinker with the door. So how was your sleep the first night as a human? I am uh. curious. A bit strange. I can sleep on my back without issue now that I have no tail, but I miss it greatly. He looks almost distraught that he has no tail. Well, I think you can move the glam remove the glamour once we're done shopping. Then you're back to your old self. Sounds good. <laughs> it does, but it's not that bad being human. It's fun. It's fun looking more like you. He says with a soft smile. So hey, where's James? I ask, noticing Yoka's alone. Yoka's eyes shift over to the window. Uh. The captain is training outside, I believe. Of course he is. What else did I expect? Sleeping in. Ha! <laughs> right, I'll be back later. I'll, I'm taking the car to go to the mall with these two to shop for some clothes. Right, pushes him away, oh, pushes himself away from the door and digs into his pocket, retrieving huh. his wallet. Here, take it. I got some cash from Mr. Forrester so that we can buy them essentials, he says while air quoting. I store his wallet in my purse. I guess that's covered. I've gotten permission from For Forrester Inc. as well. James and Eo cannot leave the premises of the lake without someone high up giving approval. Homeboy, I forgot. God damn, get some... I don't know. <laughs> there he is, wearing practically nothing as he kicks the air, showcasing his bared toned calf. I told you to put some clothes on, I call out to him. James stops his training and lowers his uh. leg. Those garments don't fit. We're going to get you some new ones, but I can't have you walking around like that in public, alright? Just put on that shirt and pants that I, I gave you. The cardigan should cover up the ripped, ripped seams. James roughly reaches for the pile of clothes left in the grass and finally dresses himself. It's time to take them out in public. I feel stared at. No correction, I can feel everyone stare at James. Alright, I guess it is a little strange to see a, such a muscular man walking all funny because he's afraid he might rip, some, rip through the seams of his pants. Actually, I'm a little glad James is taking all the attention because otherwise people will be staring at Eok, who still has a few non-human traits that the glamour could not hide. You think he's super? I hear someone whisper in the crowd referring to James. That's not good. I quickly block that person's sight by walking behind James. Oh. Oh, this is his outfit! In the pictures! He's so cute! This is a very busy marketplace, says Eok and all the people around us. We can call it a shopping. We call it a shopping mall. I stay with Grant. I can give you a tour if he has some spare time. Though. It's uncomfortably crowded. James complains. Too many eyes are watching me. It'll be less crowded once we enter the hmm. store. I see many humans walk. Uh, uh, I see many humans walk holding hands. Yoke observes. Why is that? Please let Yoke show some curiosity towards our culture. I happily oblige him. People hold hands to show they're a couple in public. I explain. Also, parents hold their children's hands so they don't get huh? lost. Couple. Yoke echoes. Couples are romantic partners. I think James. I remember James used the term mate before when he thought Eok and I were together. Mates, I add. Um. These couples hold hands so they don't get lost, Eok asks. <laughs> and I'm giggling. That's one way to look at it. It's then that the couple Eok was looking at stops for a brief second to peck each other on the lips. <laughs> uh, totally two different reactions. James staggers backwards at the sight, eyes wide. Uh. How indecent, he complains loudly. Uh. Eok awkwardly looks away as well. Mm, yes, that should be done in private. I never actually saw anyone kissing on Yule. I figured it was just a human gesture, but it seems they do have it in their culture. Do goat kiss as well, I ask. Intimacy like that is reserved behind closed doors, James points out. It is disgusting they would do this out in public. Perhaps humans don't think so, Yook points out. I mean, some people do, I added thoughtfully. A small kiss like that is usually okay out in public, but a long and intimate kiss, yes. I think people would rather do that in private as well. Huh? Does Michiko kiss anyone? <laughs> Yoke asks in such an innocent tone. My mouth drops open. I didn't expect a question like that. He's asking if you have a mate, James. James, James I know! James grunts. Yes, I know what he's asking, I reply a little irritated. And no, I do not, Yoke. I think if I did, my time on you would have been much lonelier. Yoke is quickly distracted by something else, something that is very flashy and loud in an arcade. Oh. What's that? He asks eagerly, like a child and all. Eo, control yourself. It is unsightly. James reprimands him. Eok's face falters and he looks down at the ground. Don't be a grump. He's excited about what he sees. I quickly come to his defense. Also, that's an arcade hall. People go there to play games. I explain with a mm -hmm. smile. Games? Eok per perks up. I'm not sure we have time for playing games right now, but it won't hurt to look, right? Mm. Yes, yes, he agrees eagerly. Uh. What about our garments? James protests in annoyance. I can wait for a couple of more minutes. I dismiss his concerns and start walking towards the arcade. Right at the entrance of the arcade are a couple of photo booths. A small group of girls walk out, giggling at their photos. Eo looks on intrigued. Those are pictures, they say, before he can ask me anything. I noticed that was something I didn't see on Yule. Do not take pictures there. Goat's technology is not sufficient enough for photographs. James cuts in like a know-it-all. <laughs> Captain James is correct. Yule doesn't have that sort of thing, he says Eo sheepishly. 
I'm not your captain anymore. James stares at him. Snaps at him. You lost that privilege the moment you decided to abandon your troop. He directs his gaze down to the floor. You refer to me by a proper title, he helps. Yes, Prince James. Um... Can you at least try to act nicer to Eok? I ask exasperately. I know they're not exactly in good terms at the moment, but James could at least try to stay civilized. <laughs> to this deserter, James asks incredulously. Yes, I answer him without hesitating. He's helping us, so please behave yourself. James glares at me, but doesn't seem to argue back. So, Eok, would you like to take a picture? Huh? I can. Yeah, the three of us. Oh. I did not sign up for the... I yank both of them inside the booth. <laughs> It'll be cute. I grin mischievously as I stare at the screen in front of us. This is a sticker booth where you can edit your pictures afterwards. I throw in some coins from my purse so that it starts. Hmm. What do we do? Asks Eo, eager to start. We should be getting me something fitting to wear. James interjects with a sigh. We can do, do that after this. I dismiss him. Anyways, just stare at the circle over here and smile. Eo pulls his lips, <laughs> pulls back his lips and shows me a pained grimace. It's like he just ate something sour. <laughs> smile like this. Never change, Eo. You're perfect. I noticed that both of them are actually out of frame. Can you crouch down? Especially you, James. You're way too tall. Eok bends at his knees so he fit so he fit in the frame. <laughs> I'm perfectly comfortable where I am. James replies indignantly. Then he realizes what he said and immediately backpedals. Oh. I mean, no, I'm not comfortable. This place is this space is cramped. Why are we doing this? I hang down on James' arms so that he's forced to bend over and fit in the frame. What are you doing? First picture was taken. I try to get the guys to pose differently for the next one, but they're both quite awkward at it. The, both, the booth takes the next couple of pictures before it tells us it's finished. I quickly rush outside. What a bizarre blinding room. <laughs> Says James rubbing his eyes. The flashes were a bit bright, he agrees. It'll be worth it, you'll see. I see eagerly hoping the pictures turn out alright. I'm pretty much ha doing a happy feet dance as I wait, await the rolls of pictures to appear from the machine. The machine whirs and cracks until a strip of pictures falls down the slot. My greedy hands are like magnets as I swipe them up. What the fuck? <laughs> I snort, I wheeze, and I can't breathe. Oh my god. Those ridiculous sparkling eyes. I just can't. I can't. I can't stop laughing at Yook's ridiculous, ridiculous grinning face or Jane's annoyed expression with added sparkles and makeup. What kind of abomination is this? Jane demands to know. Wow, do I look like this? Yook gapes in awe. I take taken a deep breath and continue my laughter. Why are you laughing? Stop it this instant. <laughs> it's so silly. There are tears welling up in my eyes, but I finally take the time to look away from this magnificent piece of art to see James looking awkward. Are you? I stuff full of giggle. I'm, are you embarrassed? You, the mighty Captain James. Ja <laughs> James face immediately turns into a scowl as he bears his wings at me. This is not a true representation, he argues. This, this is That is a disgrace that needs to be destroyed. James makes an attempt to take the pictures out of my hand. I quickly pull them away from his reach and hug them close to my body. Oh, hell no. This should be framed and hung above my toilet. <laughs> Give that to me! James strong arms his way into my personal space and swipes the pearl pictures out of my hand. He immediately tears it up into a million pieces. My jaw drops open in shock. No! I whip out my phone with a triumphant smirk. Ha! The same you digital copies to your phone these days. Your sparkly face is mine forever. <laughs> you chuckles in the background. Sparkly face. The picture isn't allowed to see the light of day, James warns me. I don't think you have anything to say about that, I fire back. Hmm. I like a copy, Eok happily trips in. Don't worry, Eok, you'll get a really large copy. James bites down his bottom lip, giving me a death glare. He can glare all he want once, but the image of his innocent, sparkly looking eyes makes makes him the least threatening man on earth. That was priceless. Come on, let's finally get some clothes, I say, urging urging to continue to walk. James begrudgingly follows. Cool dogs. Cool dog sale. What size is James? How did I forget to measure him before we left? You're stupid now. I should get the largest sizes they have. That would probably work out an XXL. Okay, so there's a ton of clothes here. If you have a preference, you can go ahead and pick an outfit yourself if you like. I instruct them. He looks particularly interested in a really shiny sequin dress. He grabs it with his hand and releases, releases a gasp oh. all. This is so beautiful, he says, running the fabric through his hands. Shiny like gems. Um... I start awkwardly. You should probably not pick out a dress. Uh. You just told us we can pick whatever we like, says James, looking at me crossly. I scratch the side of my cheek. I know James wore a long dress back at Yule, and I 
long skirt back on you, sorry. And I did see many people wearing robes and dresses regardless of perceived gender. However, this is Earth, and right now, men wearing a dress still goes against social norms. Even if I think they should wear whatever they want, they stand out even more than they already do. I can't have them bring too much attention to themselves. The females here wore dresses and the males wore pants and shirts. I explained in simple terms. I'm sorry, Eok. Wearing that would make you stand out too much. Eok's face falls and he drops the dress from his hands. A pang of guilt pierces my heart. How can I deny him something he th thinks looks pretty? You know what? If you like it, let's get it. I say with a smile. He looks at me, his eyes growing large and wide, clearly excited. I'll just pick out a few outfits you can wear in public too, I add. Eok takes the dress from the clothing hanger. Thank you, Michiko, he says eagerly, hugging the purple sequin dress to his body. Earthling, I require a suitable training garb. <laughs> James demands. Technically, super suits meant for combat are my specialty. I could just make you, make you your own. Huh? James quirks an eyebrow. Super suits, <laughs> he repeats. I shake my head. <laughs> Never mind. Let's just get you some decent clothes first. As I scurry down the aisle of menswear, I pick out a bunch of clothing that I think would fit them, as well as look stylish, of course. I even grab some un underwear. I couldn't resist a pair of underwear with alien faces on them. Though the thought sticks around in my mind. A super suit for James. I haven't made one in ages, and my fingers are itching to get back to work. It's silly to focus on this when there's impending doom over my heart head over my head of Veritas arriving on Earth. But I've missed designing. I really have. Come here, let me see if this would fit you. I say as I hold his shirt up in front of James' chest. As I look at his face, I try to try not to remember the photo sticker, lest I burst out laughing mm. again. Seems adequate, he mumbles. Yeah. Prince James will look impeccable, you compliments him. I think it's time you try on some clothes, to see if they fit. I say give James a meaningful stare. Don't tear the clothes, please. You break it, you buy it. <laughs> Just point me in the direction of a private room, James says, as you seemed adamant on making sure people don't see me naked. I look around for the changing rooms and see the sign at the back. There it is, in the back. You can use the small stall to change in. James takes all the clothes from my arms, turns on his heel, and probably walks into the wrong direction. Yo, Yo awkwardly taps James' yeah. arms. This way, Prince James. He mentions and extends his arm to where the changing rooms are located. <laughs> don't bother me. You know what? Just follow me. I don't want you getting lost, I say, and start walking with them towards the back. I do not get lost, James immediately replies. Sure, you just strategically misplace yourself, right? I quote... <laughs> He chuckles when she quickly covers with a cough once he notices James' death glare that could rival Veritas' look. Attempting to quickly defuse the situation, I push them both into two separate stalls and pull the curtains closed. If you need any help, I'm right here. Just call, I tell them. I hope the clothes I cut James fits. I just picked the largest size I could find. There's some shuffling of fabric and I rock back and forth with my feet as I wait. If only James didn't tear up the pictures, I could be standing here giggling like a little girl at the ridiculousness of it all. It's been a while since I really laughed like that. My eyes wander over towards the stand of accessories near the entrance of the changing rooms. Curious, I check out what's available and see a ton of cute hair hair accessories. There's a small mirror on the top of the stand, and for the first time in a long time, I take the, take the time to look at myself. My hair, which I had to cut when Jill, Jill grabbed me, has grown a little since then. It's still uneven, though, and I could really use a real haircut. Maybe I should get some bangs. I spot a cute hair bed among the accessories. I try it on and check myself out in the mirror. It looks cute. Perhaps I should buy myself a little uh. gift. Earthly, I require your assistance. I hear the booming voice of James. Alright, I'm coming in. I announce myself and push away the curtain. Are you clothed? You have pants? Okay. Do these fit? <laughs> I want his face planted against his naked chest. Dang it, how many times do I have to see this mu his muscles up close? What's the problem, I say, trying not to stare. That's when I realize he's halfway put on some pants, but is having trouble with the... Oh, it's a zipper, I say, noticing his hand on his fly. I guess you don't have those over there. I am not zipping up his fly for him. Or should I? I step closer and have my hands reaching out for the zipper as I pull up the rim of his pants. James gives me a cold look, remaining silence he allows me to get closer. You just grab the pull tab like this, I grab it, and then zip it up. I close the zipper. Then I fasten the button as well to finish the job. My eyes trail from his crotch to his chest. Eventually, looking into his brown eyes, I smile. They're all done. James is temporarily distracted by something else. I catch a faint sound of the rhythm of his heart now that we're this close together. Strange how much sometimes I can hear it and other times I don't. What? I ask, noticing a sound of the uh. stare. You have something in your hair, he states. All right, I'm still wearing it. I see sheepishly and taking out the hairband. You know, you should do something about your own hair. No! His hair is falling! I can tell that his hair is falling into his eyes and bothering him. Perhaps a haircut, I propose, reaching out to to his black hair. James cocks his head to the side of one of my fingers. 
I don't trust anyone to get close enough to me with a blade, not while I'm under this oath. I pout in response. Is he really that paranoid? Oh, come on. No one is going to murder you just because you're getting your hair cut. Uh. I am in enemy territory, explains. I cannot take that risk. Well, if you're that adamant about it, I could do it for you. Uh. Michiko, I am in need of aid. Eok suddenly screeches. I quickly exit out of James' room and enter Eok's. I end up helping Eok with his own crisis as well, being stuck in a sweater. Luckily, he managed to figure out the rest himself. I stand in front of James' changing room face with a closed curtain. Hey, James, please wear one shirt and some pants when you come out so you can immediately start wearing them instead of my dad's clothes. All these clothes feel restricting to move around in. None of them are suitable for combat, I can hear him complain. I figure something out, okay? I say with a sigh. I want to get this over with already. I'm hungry. Alright, alright. Looking sleek. Please don't cut your hair, you look so good. <laughs> Yuck is the first to be finished, walking out with his little clothes. Eventually, James appears as well. Oh, I see his surprise. He looks surprisingly modern and human. Give him a decent haircut, and you could even say he looks handsome. He looks handsome right now! What are you talking about? Huh? What is it? James asked, raising an eyebrow in reaction. Nothing. The clothes look good on you. Mm. But they're not appropriate for training, he points mm. out. I also feel very restricted in this, Yuck admits. Guys, please, let's just be happy you're not naked, okay? I plea with them. I'll figure something out something out when we get back home. Urge him towards the register so we can finally be done with his shopping nightmare. These two are a little picky. Can you just scan his shirt and pants? He wants to wear them straight away. I tell the cashier pointing to James. The cashier points a scanner at James, waiting for him to show the tags. I quickly place my hands on his stomach, earning another cock diver from James and force him to turn around. I fish the tag out of his collar and out of his pants to present them to the cashier. The cashier scans a piece of the clothing and removes the tags. They then scan the rest of the items. When I see the total, my eyes nearly bulge out. Over 400 euros. Damn, clothing prices must have skyrocketed since the last time I was here. I remember Rai gave me his wallet. I really hope that has enough money in it. As I opened his black wallet, what's inside surprises me the most. They're purple, I guess. The purple paper and Rai's wallet are 500 euro bills. There's about 20 of them in there. Anxiety starts to settle in my stomach, in, in the pit of my stomach. They don't set bills as huge as this. Who goes around walking 500 euro bills in their pocket? What was Rai thinking? Miss, is there anything wrong? The cashier asks, seeing my hes he hesitation. Um, you don't happen to accept these, right? I say with a nervous chuckle, brandishing one of the bills from the wallet. The cashier's eyes grow large and shakes their head. No, miss, we accept 100 euro bills and below only. You have to cash these in the bank for something smaller. Well, damn it. Stupid, Rye. No one accepts these bills. I stuff it away in the wallet and put it back into my purse. Luckily, I did carry my own debit card with me, so I begrudgingly pay for it using my bank account. I throw in the cute hairband as well. When the transaction is finally complete, Yog is the one who carries all the bags for us. Mm -hmm. What was wrong with Chico? He asked me. My brother gave me the highest amount of currency we can use here, and they wouldn't accept it, I explained. Huh. What kind of backwards planet would refuse legitimate currency? James comments. Honestly, I don't know either. He's got a fair point. I mean, I was only... I, I had to spend 400 euro, but I was carrying 500 euro. So why couldn't they just give me 100 euro back? Well, that, actually, that might be a lot of money. <laughs> We finally leave the store. Perhaps we can get a bite to eat now that we're done. I skipped breakfast and both of, both of these two did as well. We should probably do something about that. Hey, are you too hungry? I stopped to ask them. Before they have a chance to answer, a person dashes towards me and snatches my purse running away with it. Needing a second to realize what's happened, I glare at the person running away. What the hell? Thief! Yolk, Yolk James growls in position. Yoke drops all the bags to the ground and spreads apart his feet. Yes, Captain. Go, he yells. Both he and Yoke pretty much vanish into thin, into thin air, leaving me alone with all the bags. Oh no. Oh no, they can't chase that thief. If they hurt the thief, then I'll really look at the marks on the back of my hands. This is going to kill us. I gather all the bags and chase after them. It's hard to run with a plethora of shopping bags in my hands, but I try my best to, be, try my best to still be within range of the thieves. As long as I can still spot him with my eyes, then I can follow him. That he was heading for the exit. Oh, you just appeared in front of him. James apprehends a thief, grabbing his wrist and tearing my purse from his grip. I start full and sprinting. They can't hurt him. Once I get closer, I can hear the conversation. The hell do you need with that much money anyway? The thief snaps at James. Stupid supers. You don't need to be that rich. Thieves need to be punished, says James in perfect English. His eyes narrowing and glaring at the thief. Hey! Luke agrees. I, not A. <laughs> James raises the thief in the air without much effort. Let me go, you super scummy yells. A get crowd has gathered around them, some of them even recording the events. Shit, that's not good. I can't have James report you on the video. Sneakily shoot on my throat towards the two, the two of the cell phones of the people, knocking them out of their hands. Like, we're gonna dissolve it before they can notice. 
Sorry, but I have to do this. Don't hurt him, I yell, running up towards the three. I drop the bags next to me and take a deep breath. James clicks his tongue and releases a thief, letting him fall to the floor. Here, says Eo, handing me my purse. We got it back. Thank you, but you know you can't hurt him. Eo looks un apologetic. Understood. I glare at the thief on the floor. Even if he's a little piece of scum who stole my purse, you can you need to be careful, alright? Fucking super. The thief yells and gets up from the floor, lunging himself at me. When I see the knife clutch in his hand, my instinct takes over. I sidestepped him, dodging attack, then quickly conjure a thread and wrap it around both his wrists. I force him to put his arms behind his back and tie him off so he can't break free. Crime doesn't pay, I tell him sternly. The thief yells and then runs off with his hands behind his back. Yoke and James look slightly impressed at my handling with the thief. Did you see that? She used an ability, someone whispers. She's not wearing a suit, one was another. All eyes are suddenly on me as the sea whispers and murmurs erupt among the crowd. My heart starts beating uncomfortably fast. I feel myself shrink for a brief second. I forgot. I forgot what it was like to be back on Earth. I quickly grab Eoke's and James' arms. Come on, grab the bags and let's get out of here, I mumble. But Michiko, the thief is still, you protest. He's correct. Are you just going to let a thief go unpunished? James beckons Eoke's up. Back what? What? Backs Eoke up. What does she shoot from her hands? That can't be normal. I hear another voice whisper. Are they all supers? Anxiety starts to spread inside of me. I can't bring attention to the both of them either. What if they recognize them? I start hiding my face behind my hand and hang my head low. Let's go! I snap and urge the both of them to come with me. Supers aren't liked, I I'm assuming. I need to get to the car fast. Huh? You chicken why, why the hurry? You ask, concerned. I've been seen, I tell him. My heart's still beating in my huh? throat. Why is it important you're not seen? You're an earthling. You blend in, James points out. Not... Exactly. I breathe out, scanning the parking lot for the car. Unlike most people, I have an ability, a power. They call us supers, I explain. I sigh, feeling weight on my shoulders. The normies tolerate us supers to an extent. They don't want you to use your ability in public, not without hiding your identity anyway. And just now I've been spotted. This is not good at all. Huh. James raises his nose in the air and scoffs at the audacity of it. <sighs> That's the most ridiculous thing I've heard in my life. Why should you hide, have to hide your mm. power? I agree with Captain James. I think you should not hide what you were born with. I'm proud to be good. Mm. Stop calling me Captain. James grunts. Uh. Alright, my apologies, Prince James. He quickly re expresses his regrets. Let's just get out of here, okay? I already brought attention to myself. I don't want them to figure out who you are as well. We finally arrive at the spot. I park my car and I hastily throw all the bags inside the trunk. Time to leave. Oh, for some reason, I thought they were going to make it out for some reason. As I dump the bags on the couch, I sit down and exhale a large breath. Finally, we're home. That was so stressful. Yoke and James went up to their rooms. There's something strange, though. Right? I call out. Where is oh. he? Over here! I hear his voice come from the kitchen. I cram my neck to look over the couch. You still have opened the door, I asked, noting how the door is still very much huh. shut. It's like it's reinforced steel or something. I can't, I just can't crack it. I get my laser bone off the couch and saunter over towards Rai. Why would mom and dad have a reinforced steel door for our basement? Hmm. That's what I like to find out, he says with a grin. And honestly, I don't even remember we had a basement in the cabin. Mm -hmm. How'd shopping go? I say loudly. Not good at all. Something huh? happened. What? He raises his eyebrows and starts messing around with the door. My phone starts to ring. One second, I'm getting a call. I fish out my cell phone from my purse and see the caller ID. It's Kane. Kane? I answer the phone. Uh. What the fuck, Michiko? Your face is all over social media! Kane exclaims. I feel my heart stop. No. No, it can't be. <sighs> They're calling you the Super Mall Girl. Well, fuck. Super Mall Girl? That's strange of a name. But okay. Let me see the name. <laughs> but anyway. James? This route's taking forever for his love. Um, if you like slow burn, James for you. <laughs> I love slow burn, but not this slow. Anyway, thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful, and I'll see you guys in the next one.